we're going to talk about handbags again. We're going to have some more handbag analysis and decisions as to what we like, what we don't like, how can we like them. So this is per, for pure entertainment value. So just take some tea, take some coffee, have a muffy, and join me in having a discussion about handbags. Hello. So um, my last three videos, and, and welcome back everyone. I'm going to adjust this. Can you see this okay? I'm not the best with staging. I'm again relegated to my patio and we just had a rain yesterday and it feels so refreshing and you can hear the birds. You can hear, you can see the roses blooming. You guys can't, but I can. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, welcome back. I just want to say, what are we going to talk about today? Because there's more analysis that has to take place. You know how it is. We have to analyze everything from the handles to the color to the size to the designer. It's an ongoing issue. It's a never ending issue of consideration. What kind of bag works in our world? So for me, since my world is my world, is I love crossbodies. Now, I have more crossbodies than what I'm showing right here, but I'm gonna be comparing the Cassie Coach bag and the infamous Pouchette Matisse by Louis Vuitton. I've had this bag for about eight months, and I gotta tell you, I have worn it quite a lot and you can see what condition it's in I'm gonna pull up here and you know what I can't believe it but they're raising the price on Louis Vuitton bags too if you saw my last video it was about Chanel Chanel's gone up like 20% I think uh, Louis Vuitton it's is it 15 something like that so <laughs> here's another company that's raised their rates for purchase if you want to own this bag or any other bag so I'm kind of glad I got it a while ago this is something that I acquired and it's a newer one from 2019 they had so many problems with the glazing you think I'd be spooked after that last experience that I had with my speedy 30 in an emprunt leather in Aubé which is aubergine color and I had to return it to the salon uh, in my area and it's not down the street for me to get there, so to the Louis Vuitton boutique. Um, and they were wonderful, they handled things. It was quite an experience. I got the champagne and I got the whole experience, the whole um, complete Louis Vuitton fabulousness, right? But the bottom line is, it comes down to the quality of the bag itself. And this has the Paquetta trim on it, by the way. So this is not the reverse. This is not, this is the classic one. And you'll see I have an extension on the crossbody because for me, I think this is 20, 19 inches in length is the crossbody strap. This bag, I really do use and I do love it. And I love the other one that you saw, the Bevin, which is stunning. And, and by the way, I had a few questions about my hair and I do want to clarify as I'm talking about this. I'm going to interject. Um, my hair, um, I do do myself. Now, it may look like it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know that it looks fabulous, but it's like, and I, and I use the L'Oreal uh, frosting in, and someone asked me um, in creme, creme caramel color to highlight because I'm really a brunette with gray so I'm sure there's gray in there somewhere but I do do treat my and I cut my own hair too so I don't know I have to do it blind it's insane but I do my best uh, especially during these times when we can't get to our salons so I've had to learn how to do my own hair and fortunately uh, my husband is a chiropractor, so I get that kind of help also. He's not able to work and so many people need him right now. So Nolly's a musician, but he's been a chiropractor for 35 years. 
and uh, has his own business here in our area. So um, a lot of his clients miss him. Oh my God, they're walking around, you know. Ugh. People really do <laughs> miss him. He gets calls, but it's probably not the best thing that he, well, we can't, you know, right now. He can't, uh, he can't help them. So um, people just have to kind of suffer a little bit. And so he's looking forward to getting back into business, but we're gonna do it when it's safe and, and when there's security, and we're gonna take care of ourselves, make sure we're safe too. So we're in the middle of this whole dynamic about uh, when to reopen businesses and so on. But I'm here to talk about this bag, and this is the uh, Pouchette Matisse, as I said before, and I did order an extension piece to go on the shoulder strap because it allows the bag to be longer and this is a way that you can compensate you can go on Moato and they have these extensions that you can get online that um, go with the Louis Vuitton um, bags design wise uh, this I like my bags to be a little lower because I'm a curvaceous woman and when it sits right on the apex of my hips I'm sorry, but that's not gonna work. So I like to have it just a little bit lower than my hip bone. So that I, and also I can have my hands right here and it's just an easier size. So 21 inches in length is good for me. I'm five foot four. So that kind of gives you an idea that even a five foot four, I have an extension. If you are a taller woman, uh, many women who own this handbag um, do use an extension. But I just, I have worn this. Uh, the clasp is nice it's it's their classic you know trunk type clasp but I wanted to show you the interior and this one that I did order now this is a while back they actually had this this is a story to this when I was in San Francisco and I was being wined and dined basically by the um, there you go you can see the inside this is super suede so it's a suede, this is canvas. It's a, you know, it's very lightweight. Um, you can see that it, this one was, this particular one was made in Paris, uh, in France. So, so most of them are made in the US, uh, is this particular style of bag. A majority of them will uh, be labeled and dated made in the US instead of France, but I wanted a French one, so uh, they were able to scope one out. So last Christmas, a lot of them started to appear. Uh, they sort of went through their inventory and then all of a sudden they came up to speed with these bags because you can't get them online. Now maybe you can now, but you know, it'd be tricky to get them. Um, and even though they had a lot of problems with the glazing, you can see this, this is where, and sorry about my nails, they look horrible. You know, not having my nail person, cause I have beautiful, well, usually <laughs> they're not beautiful, but yeah, I have my acrylics and I don't have them right now. So one of the aspects of being staying at home, um, right here is where the glazing would crack because of the back and forth on this um, tension. Well, what they did was they, they increased the strength of the canvas. You can feel it's thicker. It's a lot tougher. It's not super shiny and it's not super um, flexible quite, it's very structured. So what they did, I understand, and I may be wrong, but this is my understanding, is they stretched, in doing the glazing, they would stretch the whole thing backwards and then glaze it with it completely extended so that this would have more flexibility. So we're gonna see what happens with it and um, can improve my nails but that's part of you know that's part of what we're doing is we're helping other people that's more important than being glamorous honestly um, this is just you know one of the interesting issues I do deal with but um, so I don't have good nails they're kind of rough from the from the glazing but anyway so here it is you can see that it's very smooth. And this glazing is a whole different glazing than the one that was on my um, Speedy 30. So big improvement. And um, so what are you gonna do? You just fall in love, but this is the most handy bag. And, um, and I have to admit, there's something. So one of the things, unless it's full, it's hard to close. And 
you just push it forward underneath here and you can lock it shut because there's nothing inside. So it has to have some weight in it. But the balance of it is really good. It doesn't flip down. You don't have a problem with that. Um, lots of expanded room. You can carry everything. And I need to be able to carry my sunglasses. At my age, I have to protect my eyes. So it's hard for me to be in bags that are too small um, because there is a Cassie 19 that is, I think this is about nine inches, 10 inches here, nine inches. And I think the Cassie 15 and 19 is just a little smaller, but it's hard for me to put my sunglasses in it. I have to have enough room for sunglasses. That's just it. So that is a non-starter if I can't do that. So two things I like to have in a bag, be able to carry my sunglasses in and also have pockets on the outside somewhere. I really appreciate having this zipper pocket. So there's a lot of YouTube videos on this particular handbag. And sometimes I just keep it open. Some women go, oh, I don't like to have the zipper pocket back there. And I go, well, just leave it open. And then you just slide your cell phone right into it. It works beautifully. And you just slide it in there. And it has the super suede in there also. Um, so just leave it open, you know, and you want to protect something. I think it's great to have it because if you have a wallet or something, you don't want somebody to just go in and out of it, but it's a nice zipper, very powerful, very strong. So they really tried to improve the quality of the canvas. So it was a big difference if you compare the different, the earlier, um, Pouchette Matisse's. So, but one of the challenges about this one is that it does scratch. So what I've done is I have, um, you can order on the internet. Um, plastic covers that can go right over this to protect it and yes I know that seems weird spending this kind of money on a bag and then having to put plastic protectors and it's actually comes from Great Britain and I will try to link it below I'll get the um, address of that particular company and I'll link it below because you can actually it has the plastic cover for both the bottom and the top of this clasp and you just push it and it opens up and some women find it really hard to go oh, where you find it I haven't had a problem because what you do is you just hold on to this right and this finds its way boom now because there's nothing in it it's a little bit harder to close anyway so it seems silly um, it's not when it's full you don't have this problem at all so but I'm showing you how to do it so when you don't have anything in there you just go like this and you can just kind of push it so it's a fairly tough bag actually um it was the glazing that was the problem mostly and the cracking of the canvas and you know so um but i happen to love the style this fits my style of of bag and so when the coach had come out with a very similar you can compare the two same size i think oh man they copy each other let me go like that sorry did they copy each other you tell me looks yeah same design uh, this one expands more because it's canvas this is leather so it's a little more tight um, but it's very roomy also and I can get my sunglasses in here and now this is fabric it's just sort of an acrylic lining in here uh, with coach on it so it's not uh, leather underneath this flap but for the price point you know it's pretty darn practical and I really do love it you, you know, again, this slip pocket, pocket is awesome for putting your, your, and so I, I do the same thing with this, you know, I just keep it open and I slip pocket that. So I, I can't tell you how many YouTube reviews are where women are talking and about this bag and they go, you know, I don't like it that it has a zipper. Also, this is a, a strap that's a little on the stiff side, but you know what? It's, it's softening up. So pretty good. So it, uh, I find it comfortable. Some women go, oh, I'd rather have leather. Leather probably is, but you're gonna spend a lot more on a Louis Vuitton. Well, about $400 more, I think, on a leather on print le leather version of this. And they're beautiful. Um, I almost bought that one in black, um, but I had my Chanel. I have other black bags. I didn't need another one. So um, this to me is a color that goes with everything. It just does. And so I actually spray you see the tabs here and here let me get up close so so i can just sit and enjoy you guys i love having you come join me so i don't want to keep talking forever so i'm going to keep this to 15 minutes try to all right so you can see the vaquetta leather here and here and i spray it with the um apple spray 
Yes, I do. The Protectant Apple Spray, the best one on the market, and it absolutely did not spot at all. It, you do it two or three times real fast, and it has protected this so beautifully, and it's still patina, it's just the same. So I just, makes me less insane having the, the leather being uh, water protected. And uh, so, so far I've been able to handle it without uh, much problem. So I've been wearing this for about six or seven months, and I gotta tell you, it's one of my favorites. It just goes everywhere and it's light. And um, now is it worth the money that they're asking? No, probably not. Probably not worth um, it. But I do like this color because it goes the colorway because it goes with everything. So you can wear it as a shoulder bag, crossbody, or, and you can uh, detach it and have it as kind of a clutch thing and where you just hold it with this. Um, but that's the same thing with the coach bags, the Cassie bags. So which came first. And so there's this, so many of the coach, um, um, community talk about this coming first. They had a bag like this many years ago. When you put them side by side, there is a distinct difference. This one has rounded corners down here. Um, it, it just has more current in how it looks compared to the old coach from 1992, I think it is. Now, the Louis Vuitton actually, as in a previous uh, video, I did explain that the Pochette Matisse was part of a bigger um, hobo bag where this was the pocket on the front of the hobo bag. And um, it, it's there, you can look it up and Google it. Um, and it was kind of an odd looking bag to me. It wasn't, wouldn't be something I would have gravitated, gravitated to, but they used this canvas um, portion and expanded it. And you know, maybe they were influenced by a coach, uh, maybe way back when these, who knows, like I said before, who actually began this trend. Um, but it could have been coach, you know, they all copy each other. I want to tell you the truth because even coach, I mean this, that's why I brought this out. Even this rogue bag, you know, looks very much like a Dior and they are trying to go into the luxury business and changing their look and trying to go after the luxury dollar. And so they're doing these bags that have little reminiscence of other designs. So, uh, which is which? who knows but i did want to tell you on this bag because i reviewed it in two videos ago um some ladies were suggesting that when i do it crossbody uh, it's just a beautiful i mean it's got here you've got the suede inside so for your money you get really good quality with coach i mean it's a steal when you consider how much you pay for a canvas in louis vuitton uh louis vuitton um to just tuck these inside here you know just pull this the problem with that, I'm not able to do it on this size bag, which is the Rogue 25 size. The Rogue 30, you can do it because a much bigger bag, it's out to here, and you can do that really well. This just stretches the hell out of it. Sorry, sorry about my language, but to, to put it in there right now, you'd have to just shove it past and scrape it against this. I, I just don't want to hurt my bag right now. So when it loosens up, maybe these uh, handles can go inside here so and then tuck in and then you can wear it crossbody and just have it where the handles are out of the way but I'm just having to resign myself to having the handles where they are um, you know just keep them up and crossbody it I think the problem I had with the shoulder straps is that um, the handles go right under my armpit so I that part of the design I'm not really thrilled with um, but I love the bag and I love a nice little satchel it's cute, and uh, so once in a while, I'm in the satchel mood. What I wanted to show you, though, was here's another brand, which is Kate Spade, and this is a very cute bag also, and it has this similar sort of feel. Um, Coach, actually, the parent company of Coach also owns Kate Spade, so there's some crossover in terms of their designs. Very similar, very clean uh, idea with the top handle. This has the chain. And this is a, a soft pink that I got in an outlet. Uh, I was going to um, a wedding where this was the color and it, and it was an outdoor wedding and it worked out really well. But this is really simple. This is a, not a high-end bag, but I do love the look of it because I love this blush pink. It's just perfect. It's a powder pink and um, I'm a pink lady. I happen to love them. So my next video is gonna be about pink bags. So here's the comparison between this one same size so all the designers are kind of there's a pocket back here too 
So if you're into Kate Spade, um, this is a nice handy little bag for the price. It was a good, it was a good deal. And then you've got a slip pocket back there. So it's very similar to the Bouchette Matisse. But you can see the quality difference. There is, there's quality in this, you know, don't get me wrong, but um, we've got to watch it here with the, with the potential problems that can occur with any flat bag. So it's one of the design flaws and apparently Coach has had their problems with cracking right here. They've also had it uh, where some of the ladies have had to return their bags. So um, you've got to really watch the glazing in this particular design. It's really the only downside, but I'm really ca um, careful with my bags. So uh, I don't tend to really I'll use them hard. So I don't think I'll have a problem, but I'll let you know if I do. So here's my Pouchette Matisse. And I got to tell you, between the three, which one do I wear the most is this one first, this one second, this one third, and this one when I want to wear that wonderful soft powder look when I want to wear pink. So these are my favorites and uh, I'm into this style of bag. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I didn't want to go too long and gab away at uh, the universe. Um, so enjoy your life, your family, and all the things that really are meaningful to you. Collecting bags is just the thing, it's not the center of my universe, um, but I'm so grateful you come and drop by and hang out with me and we can discuss these bags and hair color and all of that. Um, but yeah, I'm working on my own hair <laughs> and trimming it and I've got my own scissors and, and uh, be careful how you do it so you don't cut yourself <laughs> when you're doing it. But I do also recommend getting a texturizing scissors that you can get on Amazon and boy does that do you know it helps so that I can keep it uh, tamed so my hair is a lot longer uh, like all of you so uh, I think I painted my toenails a, a, a beautiful blush color polish <laughs> so but my my fingernails are absolutely shredding so ding, ah. anyway but uh, so I'm gonna do another video here shortly so thanks for joining me have a good evening guys um, welcome back so before I'm gone I did want to add something about the Rogue. Um, it's a beautiful handbag and well, well made. Uh, there's a huge thing going on about the different generations of Rogues. There's uh, generation one, two, and three. That means each year there were different uh, lines of Rogues. Um, they're not making them anymore um, for right now. So um, they're, they're uh, a wonderful bag, but uh, some of the women really do try to collect rogues that are really desirable are the first generation and second generation because it had a glochette that went with it, not just the um, uh, coach tag, you know, the 1941 tag. Um, frankly, I don't, and then it also has little patches here between the feet and so, you know, and there's a big debate what leather quality is better and is it better in the you know, second generation or first generation. You know, honestly, um, I think if you get your leathers, leathers too heavy today, women don't like carrying really heavy leathers. And so I can see where they were evolving to eliminate, not only cost-wise, probably number one, but too much, if you have too much hardware on a bag, it becomes heavier and heavier. And so I'm seeing a lot more of the rogues um, on the secondary market being sold because beautiful quality leather but they're on the heavy side so one of the reasons why I do like the third generation is because it's lighter um, I don't think the leather is any less thick because I've felt the other two but I think there's they, they were trying to eliminate too much doodads too much weight uh, one of the biggest complaints women have is carrying a heavy bag around so I noticed that all the designer bags are trying to go with more refined but tough leathers they're a little bit lighter so um, comment down below if you agree with that. Uh, if you don't, let me know why, because I'd be curious. I'm open. Um, this is just my point of view. It's not the point of view of everyone else. And I'm not saying the first and second generation are not gorgeous and highly made in a quality, gorgeous way. So they are um, probably more so than the third generation this, you know, last year. But um, for me, weight has become really important. So um, I don't really, it doesn't mean a whole lot whether I have a clochette or not because 
Um, I think that's an offtake from Louis Vuitton a little bit with the clochette idea and the keys and everything. Um, I think coats should stay distinctive, you know, and uh, it's okay if they don't have it. Some women really have to have it. Anyway, that's just my commentary, so I'd love to know what you think. I will talk to you soon in the next video. Take care. Namaste.